<laughs> What's up, everybody? It's the Rude Boys Power Hour. I'm sure. I'm Tom Hardy. Oh, Tom Hardy's here. Yeah, yeah. yeah play yeah. In, in the role of uh, Tom, Tommy Cash. We got Tom Hardy. Tom, thank you for coming out here. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. How's the uh, How's the movie in the Venom trailer? We're, we're actually going to be talking about the Venom trailer. So, um, oh, yeah, what? Um, what we call Venom? Yeah, Venom. I, you wouldn't know because he didn't show the you know character. Right, because I only imagine the um, special effects weren't ready yet. Right, Venom. Yeah, Venom. Uh, uh. All right, Tom Hardy. I'm gonna have to ask you to uh, to just leave. And uh, Tom, Tom, get in here, Tom. Whew, thank God. Whew. Yeah, uh, so- someone who can actually speak. Only one room in this stu- recording studio for one Tom, and one and, who can open and, his mouth. And I choose the cash ma- cash man. Damn right. right here. Who's in your mouth, Tommy? Johnny Walker, red label. Okay. Yeah, three day weekend, going kind of nice. crazy. Excellent. Uh, who's in Who's in your mouth? Oh God. <laughs> well, I'm having a Rebel IPA from Sam Adams. So yeah. Already a triple strikeout, but uh, it was available. True. Thanks that. to some house guests that you had at the Cash Estate, which you know, regardless of what went down, you were in some sort of inebriation. I'd only imagine. Oh yeah. So yeah. Should have really kicked them out, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, yeah, I probably should have also held on to one of the blue moons for you. <laughs> I'd appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, I got oh, well. I got silly. That's all good. So you had a good uh good three day weekend? Good three day weekend. Absolutely. Okay. Did you watch some movies? Movies. Okay. You? Well, I went up to Connecticut. Nice, nice. Check on some business. Some business. Yeah. Good. I don't have to get any further into that. Some prospects. A couple prospects. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some talent. Yeah. It's all good. Clink it up. Clink it up. Ooh. Ooh. That was a good clink, but that was an awful drink. That's a good whiskey. Oh, God. <laughs> so what do you say, Tom? You want to get it, cook, kick it in? Ooh, <laughs> you are having a rough... <laughs> You've, been having a rough... You've been having a rough time with your words today. I have been. Let me, let me reconvene right now in the mind and the body and the soul. Today on the podcast, on the Power Hour, we are going to give our thoughts on the latest MCU movie, Black Panther. Yes. Which we already recorded, pre-recorded in the past. We'll get to that later. But now, let's Blitzkrieg it up. Blitzkrieg news. So, in games, we, we got, got? We, we got Metroid Prime 4 to be made by Bandai Namco. Question mark. Yeah. Yeah, because I put that in there. Yeah. So the rumor was that, I think, on someone's, like, uh, professional LinkedIn page or whatever like that from Bandai Namco was talking about that they were working on a unannounced first-person shooter slash adventure game for the Nintendo Switch. And rumors went rampant that... Bandai Namco is going to be working on Metroid Prime 4, which is fine because it goes in the same vein that Nintendo told us that the team making Metroid Prime 4 was a team that has not touched Metroid Prime yet. So that would be just basically, so basically it's saying not Retro Studios, which okay. is fine, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, what else is good about that is that the Bandai Namco, specifically the Singapore studio, is kind of the team that came over from LucasArts when the Disney buyout happened. So a lot of those people were working on a game called Star Wars 1313, which uh, I don't think you know anything about, but I, it was... Mm-hmm. I heard some rumblings of it okay. a while back, okay. but... That was all just fluff you just said. You could have just said no, and we could have just moved on. Well, no, because di- didn't they put some sort of, like, um, in-production gameplay up? Oh, sure, of course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I vaguely remember right. seeing that, so... It was supposed not, to deal with the, totally the, the seedy underbelly of Coruscant and stuff like that. Maybe Boba Fett was up in the mix, but it was going to be Lucas's art, Lucas Arts's next big thing, Posts Force Unleashed. Uh, it didn't happen. It was uh, obviously too ambitious, and, you know, just the business went one way, and Disney buyout, and et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. so they didn't have the opportunity. So that's pretty cool, but still remains a rumor. Has not been confirmed yet, but because Bandai Namco helped them out with Pokemon Tournament, which was okay. a cool Pokemon fighting game, and also helped with the development of Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS, 
Why not throw in Metroid Prime 4? You know what I mean? Might as well. Yeah, you got exactly. nothing better to do. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so we also got a New Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. So this was a big blowout. I think it was a Japanese Disney event that this stuff came out. And um, Tom, are you big on Kingdom Hearts? I, w- I, I was. I would love to get back okay. to it. Um, Could you tell me the story of Kingdom Hearts? Kingdom Hearts is about pretty much these three group of friends. Okay. Sora, Riku, and Kairi. Okay. Who they all manage, they get separated because a storm hits their island. Okay. Like this creature, like shadow creature eats their island. And okay. Kairi goes one way, Sora goes another way, Riku goes another way. And then, you know, Sora's running around meeting Final Fantasy characters, Disney characters. Okay. I do know that in this, like, they show the uh, Monsters, Inc. Sure, yeah. Which is pretty cool. So and, you, to- and Toy Story. Yep, yep, Toy Story. And you go into, uh, like, different worlds. Tangled and shit like that. Yeah. So can you tell me about Organization 13? Can you tell me about Xehanort? Can you tell me about the Heartless and I, Roxas? I've played the first two. Oh, okay. I can tell you the basics, okay, but cool. I, can't, I I don't know the full... I do know that there are people out there who just know, like, everything, like, there is to know about it. Yeah, there's and, a lot to digest. This is the third... Not third Kingdom Hearts games, too, because you also have Chain of Memories and Recoded and uh, 386 over two days and mm-hmm. Dream Drop Distance and all this other nonsense and, and then final mixes of mobile one and two. games. Mobile games, exactly. So uh, this is classic Square Enix at its finest mm-hmm. where they just like, let's make up words, let's make up storylines. When you just want to play with Goofy and Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse yeah, and Final that's, Fantasy that's characters. All, yeah, I gotta say, one of the hardest parts of the, I would say the first one was probably the Lion King stage. You get turned into a lion, uh-huh. and you have your keyblade in your mouth, and it's like the controls just feel like all like oh, completely yeah. off. So it was cool, like fighting alongside Simba, Timon, and Pumbaa. But, sure, like okay. it was just it, it it was very weird, and it was a fun time. Gotcha. But my girlfriend played through this game, and to her, it was basically the great. Dalmatian Puppy Rescue, starring Winnie the Pooh, because that's all she gave a shit about. <coughs> Rescue and Dalmatian puppies, hanging out with Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, yeah, that's that's all she gave a shit about. No, no, then honestly, yeah, that there was a lot of the, because uh, I think you got like a special keyblade if you rescued all of the Dalmatians, something like that. I don't know. It was crazy. Like it got it it got real crazy real quick. Classic Square Enix. They still say it's available. It's coming out this year, Ain't but uh, this year. they've been saying that since twenty fifteen. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Square Enix. We shall see. Square Enix likes to just take letter magnets and throwing them against a refrigerator and be like, eh, "What kind of words can we make with those exactly. letters?" So blowing smoke up the butt. Yep. What else we got, Tommy? In comics, we got Brian Michael Bendis. Oh, to take over Superman with Action Comics 1000. That's cool. Which is very cool. And I also heard that they're bringing back Superman's classic look. With the, uh, you know, the red undies Heist, right? on the oh, okay. uh, on the outside. The little cowlick. Oh boy. Okay. So, they are trying, I, I, I feel like they're trying to redeem themselves. Because from what I was reading, the recent story that just happened, uh... Dark Metal Knights or some shit like that, where there's a bunch of different Batmans, and they have a Justice League he, led by the Joker, and fucking weird shit, and Yikes. yeah, so it can, and, and apparently that's rebooting the universe once again. Okay, cool. So it seems like they're trying to redeem themselves. All right. I don't think they will very much because. DC, it's just like, hey, you like you, you like something? Yeah, now we're going to take it away from you. Gotcha. So, and... Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, you know, we'll see what oh, happens. Huh? What? What'd What's you say? next? What's next? We got in movies. Movies. 
the new Cloverfield stealth release on Netflix. It did, yeah. Which, it was stealth release right at the Super Bowl weekend. Yeah, which... The big game. The big game. Which... Did you see it? What? Cloverfield, Cloverfield or the Paradox? big game? Cloverfield Paradox. Uh, I don't think our audience really gives a shit. No, because I actually have only seen Cloverfield. Really? Okay. So I didn't see 10 Cloverfield Lane You're a big or John anything. You're fan. I am. I just never got around to it oh, yet because okay. it didn't drop on uh, Netflix or anything. Really? Or, I feel like I've seen it yeah, on Netflix. It's on Amazon. Oh, I just noticed, and I, I got. That. I got to see if it's on like Prime. Okay. Because I. That tried. was pretty good. That was a nice, um, very tense movie. Right, Ramona Flowers is in that, right? Ramona Flowers, yes. Whose name I cannot come up with the life of me. Yeah. It's Ramona three Flowers. Names. It's three names. Yeah, it's Ramona Flowers. I'm gonna say Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Ramona Flowers. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Did you, you would? Did I totally would over and over. That's why I'm surprised you didn't see it. It's, you know, it's on my list. Right. I have a lot of things. You like when John Goodman watches. I mean, let me rephrase that. You like watching John Goodman things. <laughs> it's on your so, list. All right. Wait, yeah. All right. Did you see it, though? No. No. Okay. Cool. That's <laughs> what you get at the Rude Boys Power Hour. The most up-to-date analyses on everything pop culture, I'm ladies glad, and gentlemen. I'm glad we had that conversation. Glad it was it. cool. It was cool that they just were like, yeah, yeah. All right, new Cloverfield movie yeah. tonight. Enjoy, which I've heard people are not enjoying. Eh. I, I, people, people are not enjoying things? <gasps> well, no, I mean, these are people who are actually sitting through it and watching it, not just like going on the internet after seeing a trailer or a picture being like, man, well, I'm the thing. upset. There was no trailer nor picture. For right, but you, it just popped up. Right, but these are you know these are people who who are actually fans of the Cloverfield franchise, right, okay, 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 where okay, they're okay. sitting there watching and they're like, "It was good. It wasn't great." All right, let's keep keep it Blitzkrieg. All right, so what else we got? Going we got on? David uh, Benoff, David Benoff, and DB Weiss to make right, yes. their own Star Wars films. Yes, films or TV? I films. thought I heard TV films. Okay. That's separate from the Ryan trilogy, post Skywalker saga, tr- Star Wars movies. Right. At post episode nine, uh, post all the fucking Star Wars stories. Okay. This is a new thing. These are the guys that that are obviously the 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 showrunners for Game of Thrones. Right. Right. And everybody was like, you know, up in arms, like, oh, this is oversaturation, or boy, I can't wait for an R-rated Star Wars movie, like. I don't know. It's just the name that they're tying to it. These guys are hot because Game of Thrones is mm-hmm. still hot. You know, it's in, in its final season, so they'll have plenty of time to dedicate to that. Are we um, Are we going to see a character come out and it turns out that it's Luke and Leia's kid? I don't think so. <laughs> to be honest, I think I'm, like like we we can do an, we can do another like a Star Wars special that we did when Episode Eight came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I I think. Uh, Skywalker stuff is kind of going to be done. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think. Okay. What do you think? I... All right, Tom, keep it Blitzkrieg. Let's go. <laughs> what a dick. Oh, it's going to be one of those fucking yep. shows. All right. Michael Fassbender and Arnold Schwarzenegger to star in Kung Fury sequel mo- movie. Did you hear about this? I don't think you did because you just read that thing like it was the first time those words put together on a sentence i just heard about it like okay this you weekend Fury, right is that the musical one is that the what? music one no there's a thing on netflix that was like uh oh, Kung super, Fury. Oh, okay like this uber 80s neo i'm thinking of, okay i'm thinking of kung fu hustle no <laughs> kung fu hustle wasn't even a musical there was musicals in there musicals no there was no there was music in it but there, it wasn't no kung fu hustle was like the with the screaming tongue, right? What? Yeah, I don't. Know, I haven't seen Kung Fu Us in a while, but sounds I don't like know. you've never it's seen. Same it. thing by Shaolin Soccer. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I'm thinking of another. Oh my god. A, an, another, another uh, Kung Fu movie. All right, let's keep it blitz screen. Coherent podcast, ladies and gentlemen. That's cool. Moving on. I'll Michael Fassbender is is fantastic. He can do no wrong. <laughs> let's. <laughs> I've never seen Assassin's Creed nor Co- uh, Alien Covenant, so I can't really. Yeah. Uh, he was in Prometheus. Yeah, I like them in Prometheus. I'm sorry. So we have we have uh, Battle Angel Alita pushed back to December. This was supposed to be one of Fox's like big uh, 
summer blockbuster oh, movies. Right, with the anime eyes, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And right. J- and James Cameron is uh directing it. Which, hey, you know what? James Cameron actually knows what he's doing when it when, when uh, cyborgs and androids and whatnot are involved. Okay, sure. You know, unlike, you know, making blue cat people. Okay, I, sure. Let's just keep, you know, stick with stick with what you know, Mr. Cameron. Stick okay. with what you know. Uh, Predators also got pushed back to September. Predators? Predators came out years ago. Uh, you no. You mean the new Predator movie? Yeah, oh, okay. okay, so they marked it as Predators. Who's they? Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, the assistants in the back, we're going to have to shoot them. Fucking interns, oh my god. Goddamn prick. What are we paying you for? Get back to work! <laughs> Moving on, keep it Blitzkrieg. Red Sparrow is the Black Widow movie we don't want. What the fuck is Red Sparrow? It's this movie... What? Oh god, hang on a second. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay. The interns are back. The interns are fine. The interns are back. They're fine. They're in the back. We, we don't worry, them. don't worry. We took care of them. <laughs> Shit, hang on. DMX's dog, little DMX, is running around. Take it easy, take it easy, take it easy, take it easy, take it easy. Alright, it's okay, it's so. okay. All right, now he sat in the Cash's chair. Red Sparrow. Oh gosh, oh gosh. There's some live... Uh, chaos going yeah. on right here, which is how we love it here at the Wall Street yeah. Bangers. Red Sparrow is... It's a it, it's a Russian spy movie with Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, right! And, dude, if okay. you look at it, and if you know yes. anything about Black Widow's, like, origin, yes. it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's Black Widow. Yes, it's you're like, right. who cares? You're right. Um, what do you mean who cares? I think people want to see a Black Widow movie. Yeah, we want to see a, this. Yeah, we want to uh, see a Black Widow movie. We don't want to see a no frill. It's like okay, your mom, y- your mom goes to the supermarket. Yo, why is this gotta be by my mom? You ask for Cheerios, she brings back toasted oats. Oh, all right, this is bootleg fucking. Yeah, all right. exactly. All right, so okay. nobody cares. Gotcha. I won't waste my time. Okay. <clears throat> New uh, in TV, we have. Uh, there's a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle reboot, and believe it or not, Chris, yeah, the fans are outraged and aren't liking it. Wait, there are fans. They shouldn't be called fans then. They should just be called critics and complainers and whiners and bitches and moaners. Exactly. Huh. Yeah. Do, not they, re- do they realize that not every franchise is made for them? Do they realize that in order to stay relevant in this day and age, they have to reinvent themselves and try to appeal themselves to a younger audience, a newer audience, to bring in more money to themselves? I don't think they do. Really? They don't? don't? No. Huh. Okay. Yeah. People are complaining? All right. We don't what a shock. So about fanboys. No, no, no. I've done enough. That's true. I think I've done what? I don't think you have done enough if they're still complaining. It's twenty. It's 2018. I think I've done what? Three of them already and it's only Something February? Like that. Something like that. <laughs> so we at, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Stranger Things Stranger Things season 3 to begin production in April. And we'll have eight episodes. Yeah, wow. that's it. I just I, I think that was in an interview with um, the Duffer Brothers. Okay. Um, so ep- eight episodes puts them in line with season one, same amount, but one less than season two. Okay. Um, so what did it say? Promo- uh, production in April. So yeah. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. I've I've got some Stranger Things thoughts that uh, I'll bring up later in the show. Okay. Cool. All right. Sounds awesome. What else we got? We have in wrestling. Wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Booker T and Corey Graves got heat. Nah, y'all, y'all getting worked. Shucky ducky quack quack. Tom's got what I call Ron Burgundy disease that I can put anything <laughs> up on a teleprompter and he'll just read it. So there is this fucking thing. So first off, uh, in WWE Raw, they brought in Jonathan Coachman back from ESPN to be an announcer. Then they and he's so moved, boring. Well, yeah, he always was. Then they moved Booker T off of Raw. So what Booker T and Corey... Well, Booker T went on his podcast and talked about the reason that he's off the announced team was because him and Corey Graves had heat. You know, they were just saying, you know, a couple too many personal things to each other, throwing barbs. And it basically ended with Booker T being like, well, if I see you in the street, I'm going to just beat your ass up for real. Sure. Right. I get it. Corey Graves, 
bit of a concussion issue, so probably wouldn't uh, want to get into a battle, into a Especially fight with him. Especially with, like, Booker T. Right, exactly. Uh, a five-time. Five-time? Five-time. 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 WCW champion. champion. So, a week later or two, it actually was revealed that, nah, you're getting worked, wrestling internet. Good. So, good. that's always good. Because, yeah. like, something like that, it's like... What would people have to gain? You know what I mean? Nothing. Like it's like Booker T and Corey Graves aren't like trying to get a WrestleMania match. Yeah, they're just fucking working you marks for real, for free. Old school, baby. Old school. Marks huh? getting marked, you jabroni marks. So we also got Jeff Jarrett is going into the Hall of WWE Hall of Fame. WWE that, Hall of Fame. That yeah. just got announced today. That's correct. Yeah. That's uh. That was a, that, that's a little surprising. That is huge because he was not notable. See, you WWE said this life. earlier, and I completely disagree. What did he do? He brought in the road dog. Oh, wow. He, oh, let me finish. Okay. He was what? A in the road dog. He was what? A five-time IC champion? Okay, cool. He was... Exactly. Four, four or five exactly. time tag team champion. Okay. He. There he's are been, more, he's been around the business. There are more deserving world champions who have not been inducted. Who than would Jeff you? Jarrett. Who would you put in over Jeff Jarrett? The Undertaker. This year? I don't think he's done yet. Well, still, I don't think Taker's done yet. The reason, honestly, the reason I see Jeff Jarrett getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame this year is purely political, because. When he was in WWF for a hot minute, and then went to WCW for a hot minute, and then went to WWF for a hot minute, and then went to WCW for a hot minute, and then came back to WWF for a hot minute, and then mm-hmm. ended WCW, basically. Right. Before doing all the TNA shit, it was just, he, he wasn't doing anything. Like, he just kind of, like, when he went back to WCW that final time, he was booked. Because his family's in the biz, helped him get a, a leg up. Don't get me wrong, wrestling is all about nepotism. Mm-hmm. But... He's not completely deserving, and that's why I think that this thing is a little political. It's it, it, it's for something like that. Maybe you know Vince is trying to get some old tapes or whatever like that. Maybe Dixie Carter's sleeper cell agents are finally coming into WWE. Who knows? You know what I mean? Wow! All right, we're going real conspiracy. Exactly. God damn. Um. But what? A, but every year they do this. Every year they're like, "Oh shit!" You know, don't look at my hair. They do like a "Oh shit!" like uh, induction, whether it's Warrior, or Macho Man, or really that's all I can think of. Kurt Angle coming back. Sure, sure, that. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That listening to you makes, you know. Changes my feelings about it now. Because I'm right. More people need to listen to me all because right. I make all right. sense. Calm down. So moving That's on. That's what this is all about. Making all sense. All right. Let's keep it Blitzkrieg. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker. Best Buy to stop selling CDs in July. Yep. Ah, this hurts me. Oddly enough, they're still selling... I think they're still selling vinyl. Well, that's because... Um, Hipsters like it. Yeah. Yeah, so you like it because you're drinking an IPA, uh, but not by choice. <laughs> <laughs> not by choice. All right. Uh, yeah, no, that 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 sucks. That hurts me uh, because I think I might be one of the only people that still buys physical media that isn't video games or whatnot. Sure, CDs. Just say it. Yeah, CDs, DVDs. Right. So. Yeah, that, that that that's just the way of the times. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Our but, brick uh, and mortar stores are going bye bye. What are you what you gonna do about it? Cry. Okay. I will weep for the future. And who knows? Maybe that crying will have them stop. Who knows? Because mm-hmm. we both worked at Borders Books, mm-hmm. and they eliminated the vast majority of their multimedia section, sure. with the exception of new releases. Mm-hmm. So who knows? They could still have like maybe the top twenty, top thirty. CDs or whatever like that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it, it's still a possibility that it exists, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows what the future brings? Who knows? So also, after thirty plus years, Uno gets a sequel. 
Yeah, I was going to add this to the notes, but I was like, and I read the article. It's called DOS. Yes, 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 yes. It apparently has the same rules as Uno. But there's two piles. Like, it took them 30 years to come up with that shit. And also, like, if if I say DOS, we, you add up, like, the amount of cards in everyone's hand, and that's how many points... This took, gets. this took this took millionaires took 30, years. thirty years to come up with. Good job, Mattel. I'm pretty sure it's coming out to Target. Yeah, like yeah. Well, I'll I'll take a look. Maybe we'll get a a, a free uh, a free. We'll get a, a live game in of Dose. Yeah, and because uh, Uno is one of those like we, we were gonna talk about some games that end friendships. Uno is one of them yeah. with the fucking wild plus four sort of stuff. I I saw a a. a, a compilation video of parents playing uno with their kids right and the kids fucking freaking out like crying like this isn't fair like how am i supposed to win and it's like that's the game kid like like i changed the color on you you know what i mean you got to draw four cards i skipped you like that was a lot of oh, it's like man. they get skipped and they're crying yeah i haven't i haven't had a good uh uno meltdown in a long time <laughs> <laughs> uno meltdown yeah. We might have to check that out. Yeah. We'll have to play that. What, Uno or Dos? Uno. Oh, uh, Dos. Whatever. Both. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm down for either or. Todos los yeah. juegos. And apparently it said not to hold your breath for a trace. Did they? <laughs> <laughs> we got Toy Fair news. Toy Fair news, yeah. So Toy Fair was this weekend, as per recording. Yep. Uh, New York Toy Fair. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I saw a couple of the, you know, they, they got some new Marvel Legends, some new Transformers, some yep. a lot of new uh, NECA toys coming out, like with Ghostbusters or the movie It. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. Just wanted to, to tell you about that. So the, you got a Deadpool line coming out. Okay. Specifically a Marvel Legends, a uh, Black Panther and Ant-Man and the Wasp. Line of Marvel Which Legends. they already have the Black Panther Marvel Legends out. We saw it Well, earlier. so I think that they're, they're kind of like adding to it a oh, little okay. bit because of the movie that just came out. Yes. You know, they're going to add a little more to it. Um, you got that sweet, you'll see it on our Twitter account, RudeBoys469, talking about the Infinity Gauntlet, which looks super sick. I cannot wait. Fully articulated. I am totally buying that. I, I, I'm I, in, baby. It's $100 and... I can't wait to give people the finger with oh, yeah. the Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, yeah. That's going to be something fun. Oh, I can't wait. And, it's um, huge, though, like we were saying. What I, what I, what I did see was uh, so you got some figures coming out for the Venom movie. And uh, so what they're doing is they're kind of... It looks like Mattel is splitting the line with comic book versions of the characters mm-hmm. and the movie versions of the characters. But they were just showing comic book versions. And um, that's it. So you got Carnage, Venom... And Scream, which Scream was like the female symbiote with the big hair. Um, that's it. Scream? Just to kind of show you. Scream. I thought her name was Screech. No, Scream. Okay. Cool. Speaking of Venom, and speaking of movie stuff like that, we were going to talk a little about trailers. Yes. Trailer talk. Deadpool 2. Deadpool 2 trailer. Which we finally get a off. real... We finally get a real Deadpool yep. trailer. It was pretty funny. Um, uh, yeah. Talking about the CG and shit like that. The arm. Yep. <laughs> like that. I, I was like, all right, all right, good. Uh, definitely looks cool. And honestly, if that's the only trailer that drops, I'm happy with yeah. it. Yeah. Like, no, that, that it didn't fine. show too much. It, ju- it showed just enough. Do you think X-Force is back there? Because they were showing, like, did you see, like, some analysis videos? Yeah. Uh, it could also be, uh, what the hell Wild is it? Wild Pack or something? Yeah, shit? yeah, okay. because the one dude, it, it looked like GW Bridge. Okay. So, yeah, that was a guy named G.W. Bridge. That's fine. It's the 90s. Yeah. Uh, the solo. We finally got a solo. Finally, after months and months and of anticipation, Solo, a Star Wars story. The it? trailer popped off. Looks like more Star Wars. It looks good. Yep. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure people will cry. Oh, yeah. Because that's all they do. I feel like Cass having, like, Woody Harrelson... And Amelia Clark. Okay. It's kind of weird casting. I mean, I don't really know their characters. Why? Because, like, you know you know my thoughts on casting characters sometimes. Sometimes if it's, like, if the character makes sense 
to have that actor portray them, mm-hmm. I'm okay with it. But to just have an actor come in and be like, oh, Woody Harrelson's not doing anything. Let's get him attached to this movie. Sure. That's a little weird. Okay. But don't get me wrong. Like, I don't really know shit about shit about this movie. I was using that in the context for comic book films, which we already have a basis of who's what in those films. Sure. This one is completely new characters, from, from what I understand. Um, so that could be cool. Um, but you also then have <laughs> Donald Glover. Playing Lando. Lando Calrissian, which, which is, I'm excited for. Which is very cool. Like, I think he'll do a good job. I don't know the dude who's playing Han from a hole, hole in the same, wall. Same, same. Like, I'm like, who the hell are you? Same. You know, I mean, then I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's not Peter Mayu and the Chewbacca. No. I'm sure it's the dude that was in the suit for... Last Jedi. And Force Awakens. Sure. Yeah. So, I'm looks like, like more Star Wars. I'm okay with that. Think we'll see uh, Harrison Ford at the end? No, why? Well, just like if it's like him telling the story. No, mm. I like that idea. I think he's done. He was done, fucking it from Empire, dude. Yeah, he's done with this fucking yeah. franchise. Yeah, he's like, stop fucking talking to me. Let me fly this plane and let me crash it. Um, oh, that's why Grandpa shouldn't be flying planes. <laughs> yeah, is he and- still banging close to Flockhart? Uh, yes, they are actually happily married, believe okay. it or not, still. She loves that old Ford dick. Yeah, he, I'm sure he loves that skinny broomstick lady. Pussy, you mean? <laughs> I don't think that was what I meant, but... I think it is. <laughs> I say what you won't say. That's fine. Right, and I'm the one who's drinking. Yeah, shut up. Alright, we got the Venom... <laughs> Underwhelming Venom trailer. I think I, I put this in there. I put quotes around Venom. Mm. No disrespect to our you our, our previous guest. Well, I, I I meant to put quotes around Venom because you, you don't when you... see shit about ah. Venom. <laughs> 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 this is maximum cheeky mode right now. Oh yeah, this is what happens when, when we have to record on a oh, Monday. Right yeah, okay, that's um, Yeah, uh, kind of underwhelming. Like, kind of, uh, very. Well, yeah. I, no, I, I wouldn't say very underwhelming. I'm just gonna say that was underwhelming. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I. Yeah, I was just like, all right, cool. All right, they have his design in the poster. In the poster. That's about it. Sweet, and we got to see the ooze, which right. I can't wait to see the Ninja Turtles in that. Right. <laughs> the ooze. Yes, I got it. Yeah, I bet. Ivan. Ooze. Yes. It's, it's a complete. It's like a, it really is just. It's a joke. I it's. I, I will say that if they're like, oh, the fact that they're trying to do a Venom movie with, that has no relation to Spider Man. What they seem to be doing, they it, it almost looks like. So the trailer looks like they're gonna do, the, animated series, origin where it's like this thing from space came down right to Earth and is a thing, you know what I mean? As right. opposed to. Someone going into space and collecting this thing, a la Spider Man, collecting the black suit mm-hmm. and bringing it back to Earth. So yeah. that's fine. But how are you going to give Venom Spider Man like powers if the suit didn't assimilate Spider Man's Spider Man powers? We maybe will find he out, sees especially Spider- once the CG. Maybe is he done. sees Spider Man on the TV and while wearing the costume and he's just like, that's what I want. Maybe, who knows? Or maybe that they'll stick with Eddie Brock and he's like, fuck Spider-Man, so he wants to be like an evil Spider-Man. I don't know. You know what? I don't know. I don't know shit about this movie. This, this trailer shouldn't have even came out. Yeah, I mean, what we saw, Tom Hardy, we saw a train derailment which looked like it could have had some sort of webbing on, like, on it and you saw Michelle Williams' crying face. So no, she was crying. She was crying. Yeah, she's always crying. She's All like right. Ric Flair. All right. She's always crying, not bleeding. Always crying. Sometimes bleeding. <laughs> Anything else, Tom? No, no, no. All right, that has been an underwhelming Blitzkrieg news. All right, Tommy, what you been up to, buddy? Tell me all about it. I've I've been watching. Uh, well, finished actually. Altered Carbon on Netflix. All right, so this what's is, all that about? This is about it takes place this all right, this guy he's like a freedom fighter and okay. they all have these stack they're called stacks. Okay. And everyone 
has them. So like they they're like recordings of your of your consciousness. Okay. So like a digital spirit. It's sure. Yeah. And then you can like, you can get, put, your consciousness can get put into another body. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you're really, uh, wow. I'm sorry, I'm, it's been a hell of a weekend. Yeah, uh-huh. I watched one episode, it looked really cool, super sci-fi. Super sci-fi. Super sci-fi. Like, you know, if... Take place in the super far, far, far yeah. future. Like, if, like, people, like, you know, shoot your stack, you're, you're, you're done. You right. can't come back. Like, there's this one where this lady, her stack gets put into this, like, drug addict and... You know, she goes and meets up with her husband and whatnot. So okay. it's just, it's it's very cool, very right. like very odd. Uh, the the main character is the dude who played Rick Flag in Suicide Squad. Oh, okay, cool. So he plays He's got a hell of a career. He was also, yep, nope, that doesn't help you. Is Alex Murphy in the RoboCop remake? Mm. Yeah, I know. Poor, well, that was the main character, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, so poor fellow. Did you say poor fellow? Poor fellow. I heard I heard that remake was fucking terrible. <laughs> um, he plays this freedom fighter named Takashi Kovac. Right. And because he's an Asian dude with a stack that went to a white dude. Right. Yes. So not a spoiler alert. It's in the first fucking ten minutes of the yeah mo- uh, show movie show. show. Yeah. It's you know it's ten episodes. Really good. I, re- I highly recommend it to everyone. It is downloadable on the Netflix app. Good Dang lord, what is going on back there? It is downloadable on the Netflix app, which is what I love about the Netflix app, you especially could, with my commute. So that means you could you you could totally like bang through this then on the commute. I potentially could, yes. There is you a possibility won't. that I could. Because I like to sleep on my commute. I understand that. What else what else have you been up to? Uh, I also started watching Ash vs. Evil Dead. Okay. Uh, this is Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell. It TV was show. on. St- it's on Stars. Uh, it. I, I'm. I'm a big fan of the Evil Dead franchise. Okay, cool. You know, I even like the remake and whatnot. It's. It's just fun. I mean, anything that Bruce Campbell does, I'll. Al- I'll always watch. Like he's probably the best part of the three Spider-Man movies that Sam Raimi did. Um, best part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'll stand by that. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm... Only redeeming part mm. of Tubby Maguire. Hmm. Actually, him and uh, Alfred Molina in the second one. Um, mm, all right. Second, second one's the best one. Sure. Out of those three train wrecks. Right. Uh. What down, else? Downloaded the Ninja Turtles DLC. Oh, for Justice Two. Yeah. Nice. How was that? Very cool. Uh. It. You know, you you know, you get to play as uh, you know, the four turtles, sure. and they. I'm guessing they probably have all the same ending, which you actually pointed it out to me that I can change. You know them to uh, you know I could play as Michelangelo. Or yeah, from the uh, from the character selection. Yeah, yes, 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 which was very cool. But like the ending that you get, it's just it's like it's like ADD, ADHD like they, they're what? all over like they're talking over each other and well, whatnot what, what ending are you talking about you're talking about the, like, after you be brainiac ending? yeah oh, okay gotcha. yeah or arcade, yeah that's videos. the thing when you with the DLCs they don't add anything to the story okay which I think would be kind of neat to do but I guess that would take longer in yeah. development yeah, and whatnot yeah. probably so. just easier to do it this way yeah very fun nice. I also had a McDonald's mishap. Oh, okay. Do tell. So I'm, uh, you know, a fun single gentleman. Okay, sure. Nice. And the ladies. Da- ladies. So I'm on the dating site that I frequent, and it goes, I get a message, and it goes, you have, someone likes your profile. Swipe right. Okay. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, cool. All right, let's see. Maybe, you know, get a date. Maybe I'll have a a little lady for Valentine's Day. That, you know, that, that, that'd that sure. be nice. Sure. It turned out to be a McDonald's ad. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Like, like I get on, on the app? I get, because it's a free app, so you get what you pay for. Right. So, so you got, ad, you got ad, advertised, too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Fat guy, single problem. Wow, that is a that is a fucking power move. I was McDonald's. just like, I was just like, oh shit, okay, cool, cool. And then like I, oh. hit, I hit the, I, I hit that mark, and I'm like, 
Oh, fuck you, McDonald's. Fucking McDonald's, fucking sneaky bastards. These sneaky sailboats. Sneaky sailboats, and so, dude. Yeah, I, it, they got me. They got me good. I'm sorry. You're a catch, though, Tom. Don't, don't ever forget that. I know I'm a catch. I'm a great guy. You are a great guy. Um, You're a great guy, Tom. What have you been up to? What have I been up to? Oh, let's take a look at what I got here. So, I believe, what, last weekend or something like that? I picked up a game called Screen Test. Stranger Things. Okay. What that is, is it is a card game that you play while watching Stranger Things. Or I guess really any show, but this one's just specifically for Stranger Things. Okay. And the card, you, you pick several cards, and the cards have something that would pop up on the screen when you're watching the show. So, like, it could be, like, a kid on a bike, or a flashlight, or a Hawkins National Lab van, or something like that. Okay. And you get points for when you do stuff like that. So... It's 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 pretty much kind of goes with like 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 one of those old school drinking games like you're watching Star Wars and every time a Jedi shows up you take a drink. This is in the same sense where every time something on that card shows up you get a point. All right? And the the box set that's out which I got from GameStop is good for season 1 and 1 and 2. Okay. So basically me and my girlfriend went through this game and went through the entire series of Stranger Things. Again, which was fine. Um, I, I was I was being super attentive during the first half of the season one mm -hmm. because for some reason, like I just don't remember it a whole lot. Like the the later half, I remember of season of season one. Season two, I only saw once before this showing. Right. So I had kind of an idea of what to expect because you want to do that too. Like you get a card that it's like um, eleven faces the Demogorgon or something like that. You know that only happens in the last episode. You know right, what I mean? Right. So it's like you can be like, all right, I'm gonna just kind of check out a little bit, right, and wait for that to show up. And you have to call it while it happens, so you get the points. Um, hmm. pro probably be really cool with more people. Definitely, I'm sure, but you'd have to carve out a lot of time. To but you've already get a couple episodes played it in. through. Doesn't matter. It's all about the hand. You mm. know what I mean? It's cards. It's always so about the hand. it's all about the hand. It's never, about the hand. never doubt the hand. Never. The hand always knows what it's doing. Exactly. The hand knows best. Yes. So, yeah, it's all about the hand. Right. Okay. So, you know, it, to be honest, like, my girlfriend kicked my ass playing this game. but no. Because she had she had better cards than I. That's right. really all it came down to. Um, and, and I'll give some thoughts. All right. Not a fan of Stranger Things. I see this dog. No, no, no. He is. Little he... DMX. Not a little, fan of this dog. Little DMX. Come on. All right. So, um, so, so I'll give my quick thoughts on Stranger Things now that I've seen it and fresh in my head. Season one, I would say is fucking perfect. Okay. Season one is so, so good. I cannot come up with any flaws towards it. I have some problems with season two. Okay. So I've got is. problems with Max and her brother. Okay. Like, like just them getting shoehorned into the series. I did not like the soundtrack because in the se in season one... The soundtrack was more natural. The soundtrack was more like, what's playing in the background? What's happening here? What's happening there? Whereas in season two, it's just like, hey, here's an 80s song right. while you see a montage of Eleven coming to Chicago. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it was kind of... Don't, and don't get me wrong, like, all that stuff works, but it lost a little bit of the spirit that I thought season one had. Sure, which, you know, you know my feelings on music and stuff. Absolutely, yes. So which, very similar... In that, in that to respect. To my issue. Yes. Okay. Um, but that's it. Um, okay. I would definitely play it again. Because, right, cool. like I said, season, season one is super fantastic. Yeah. I, I love the Pitch series. perfect series, I would dare say. Mm. Oh, indeed. Interesting. Indeed. Interesting. What else have you been up to there? I've been playing Kermit? some video games. Yeah. I started... I wanted to play Shadow of the Colossus, the remake. Okay. But... Right, but I knew I didn't have the time nor really the funds okay. available to play it. So what I want, I started playing the Last Guardian, which was the more recent Team Ico, Ico, whatever. That team's game that okay. came out. So it was like a spiritual successor to Ico and Shadow of the Colossus that came out for the PS4. That should have came out for the PS3 years ago, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. I only got a couple hours into it. What it is is your character, a young boy who kind of shows up in a tower, doesn't know really what's going on, and is basically right next to this big monster 
called a, a, a trico or trico, whatever the pronunciation is. It's basically a dog plus a bird put together. Okay, and I knew from the get go once this game was announced, I so was it's like, a third. No, I knew from the get go when this game was going to be announced, I'm like, they're going to kill this creature because that's how this thing operates. That's how the, this uh, game developer. So you're not getting operates. attached to it. No, but like they make it really hard. You know what I mean? Like the the creature will follow you when it shouldn't because it's a, it's it's a, it's an animal. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And they do a good job giving it its own like brain. Let's say, okay. like it kind of just does things, like w- without even y- you telling it to do it. You know what I mean? Because it's a, it's a creature like little DMX over here. Like he'll just do things. He's not obedient at all in the least. But y- you love it for some reason. And, you, you know, they'll pull at your heartstrings. No one thinks um, their own kids are gross. No, absolutely not. Uh, but, but I've only been a couple hours into it. I haven't gotten back to it. Okay. I uh, hope to get back to it maybe sometime this week. Uh, I did play and finish Thimbleweed Park, which I'm pretty sure I talked about on the show already. And God, I really did like it. Fucking enough with Thimbleweed Park. Uh, do, do you know what? This is it. I'm done. Okay? Okay. It was good. I liked it a lot. Okay. Good story. Really, if you love point-click adventures or you're an old-school gamer like that, then uh, I would definitely check it out. Super fun. Okay. I also played and beat another game this year. Wow. Wow. It's called Rive. What is this? It came out for the Nintendo Switch. What is this? It's a game put out by two tribes. Okay. And it is a, what I like to call, not two chains, two tribes. I would like to call it a twin stick shooter slash platformer. Okay. So uh, you got it's it's platformer. Don't need to really explain that. But twin stick shooter like a Robotron twenty six, mm-hmm. uh, twenty sixty four, Geometry Wars, shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you so so what's happening is the dialogue is pretty funny. The story is cute. You are like a uh, like a space miner or something like that. You know what I mean? Like you're this big rough and tumble guy, and you know he has a f- pretty funny one liners. Um, he's in this little spider tank, and he basically crashes into a ship, and he has to try to find fuel to basically escape. But the ship's defenses come online, so you gotta fight all these uh, other robots hmm. coming at you. And don't get me wrong, it, it's kind of tough at points because it, it really challenges you yeah. to start thinking in addition to like the the area around you because you have basically full movement of shooting to also think about your full movement of movement if that makes sense like basically you can run around on platforms and still shoot but it's not like you are in you know you're on platforms you're still like on a two-dimensional space okay as opposed to like let's say geometry wars where you can just basically kind of you know fly in circles and then shoot behind you or in a different direction like it does add a little more to it because of the platforming nature okay um and they give you different upgrade weapons and shit like that like you get like a shotgun blast or rockets or stuff like that um but it's very funny uh super hard not really that long so i would definitely look into it if you're into that sort of stuff look it up on youtube very cute. I was super excited for it. It got announced for like the Wii U years ago, and um, it never came to obviously uh, because the kind of the Switch came out. Yeah, and the Wii U kind of faded into uh, faded into the background. But I was always hyped for it. They did like a preview thing on like an E three where you could like download demos of um, it, Nindy games. Okay. For the Wii U, and that was like the first one I played, and I loved it. I loved it then. And I really do like it now. Good, good. Playing yeah, no, thing. it's. Yeah. Uh, I'll see if uh, I. Who the hell knows? Might you know, the switch could have it. The my switch bro- has it. No, 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 no. I mean, my brother could have downloaded it on, the, oh, on his I already. I see what you're saying. So I really don't know. That's on the. I would look up some some videos and stuff like that. It yeah. might be on PS4 and shit like that. I'm not entirely too sure, okay. but I mean, the switch is kind of like my main. Your go-to, go-to for games. Yeah, I like. I was gonna go back into Mario Odyssey, try to get a couple more moons out of that. Okay. But Mario Odyssey is just not a good game to play handheld because of, like, you got to use, like, a little bit of motion control at times and stuff like that. And, yeah, I feel like having a bigger screen and a controller in your hand just makes platforming easier. Mm -hmm. But Rive was totally perfect handheld. Don't get me wrong. Like, I really... At times, I wanted to put this... Put that system down very forcefully, but uh, did not because cooler heads prevailed. You're a better man than I am. No, I know. 
And uh, that's all I've been up to. All right. That's all we got. That's all we got. All right. So the Rude Boys, we saw Black Panther. Yes, we did. And we recorded a little something, a little something non-spoilery, and then a little something spoilery about that movie. And um, we're going to throw it to our past selves, your boys, in the past. You okay with this, Tom? My t- the time paradox messes me up. All right, know this. so just, yeah, you just don't... We're just going to send it to them. We're not going to meet them. We're not going to ask them okay. what's going on because then they won't ask us what's going on and everything will be fine. Okay. All right? All right. Sounds good. So, boys, take it away from the past. All right. Rude boys on location straight out of Black Panther. Fresh in, mar- fresh in our minds. Fresh. Fresh. Very fresh. What'd you think, Tom? I really enjoyed it. I, okay. I, I liked it a lot. Uh, I definitely feel like they went back to basics okay. with it. I agree. Uh, it was, you know, very first Iron I Man. I was getting those same vibes, like, too. Which, I, not a bad thing. No, not at all. So, that's, a, that's a good one to model off of. I thought uh, Homecoming was going to be like the new Iron Man for like the newer wave of superheroes. Right. I feel like it's this movie. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. movie is way more Iron Man than... Um, than what I thought Spider Man was going to be, as far as like basically um, setting a new benchmark, yeah, for the MCU going forward. I agree, definitely, especially like this this close to uh, Infinity War. Yeah, which, which it is, sets which is it up knocking, nice, knocking right on the door. Seriously, to Infinity War. Yeah. All right, to well, Infinity War and beyond. We're in the mobile uh, command station right now, so uh, I apologize for any sort of. Uh, vehicular sound effects you may hear, but um, just deal with it. This is how we record now. By the way, as we are leaving location, Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the marquee, and it still has New Mutants up being released this year. Oh, well, I mean, you know, (laughs) they didn't get the memo. It's fine. It's glad that that movie's getting some sort of promotion while uh, it's not happening. They clearly didn't, uh, you know, listen to your boys. Like you guys have all of them. We'll leash it all, but... um, yeah, so I liked it. I thought it was a very badass movie. Like, it was very cool. All characters had, you know, a good moment to shine. Uh, all the acting was great. It didn't get too crazy with the... It, it was very grounded, like you said. Yeah. Like, it, it stayed uh, to what it was. I mean, yeah, you're dealing with, like, uh, Wakandan technology, and, you know, it's like... You, you got a lot of visual effects with that, but it's it still stayed pretty uh, pretty grounded. Yeah, I, I, you know, going, uh, you brought up characters, uh, T'Challa's sister. Okay, yeah. Very cool character. Yeah, even, definitely. E- even in the uh, comic books. Sure. Because in the comics, she's actually, like, named as, like, s- slightly smarter than he is. Okay. Like, that seems like the case. Yeah, they really do set that movie up, like, uh, it really gets the ground running because, like, obviously Black Panther was introduced in Civil War, mm-hmm. so you do have a basic understanding of who he is, and that was, I, I guess, kind of his origin story, but this would be almost like the, maybe almost like the Batman Year One sort of thing. Like, this is how he is now as Black Panther and yeah. also King of Wakanda. Yeah. And that was cool. I thought that they really kind of, I don't really know much about Black Panther, but I do obviously know, you know, he's the whole, the, he's the king of a nation, and he's also, like, you know, the, the sworn protector, so... Having that dichotomy of him, you know, trying to have a political mindset of moving this country forward and protecting its people and also dealing with the world at large because, like, you know, he just, you know, with all the stuff that happened with Civil War, he is bigger, he is in a, a much bigger, excuse me, folk. he is a part of a much bigger picture yes. than his predecessors. And, um, yeah, I can't wait. Infinity War... Like I said, knocking on the door. So yeah, Infinity. Uh, yeah, I mean, Infinity War would be great. Uh, but going back to Black Panther. Yeah, let's go back to Black I Panther. Mean, so that's what we're talking about. I'm yeah. really thinking with more and more viewings, mm-hmm. this is gonna inch up as like you know, definitely one of my favorites. I I agree. I was thinking about that as a, as we were watching it, and I don't necessarily know. Like my top five is my top five. Right. But. I would definitely say that this would be the like the top five Marvel movies, if mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Like this was a good movie. Yeah. Like this this was this was good all around. Like a movie like Spider Man Homecoming, which mm-hmm. is one of my top fives, has its faults, and I wouldn't really, you know, if it was to tell someone to watch 
Spider-Man Homecoming and Black Panther, like, you know, given who I was talking to, like, you know, there's a certain amount of humor in Homecoming, and there's a certain amount of action in Black Panther, you know, with all that stuff, but I think Black Panther is an overall, I would say one of the top five Marvel movies, again, not my top five just yet, but super strong. Yeah, very strong, yes. and it, it flowed good, Yes, too. very, very it, true. It flowed, you know, I mean, sometimes, you know, with the Marvel movies, they get a little laggy. Yes. Like, but this one, I just felt it just kept flowing, it kept moving, yep. it kept, yep. like, getting you to where you needed to go. Yep. Which, you know, I like. You know, I don't, I don't want to be sitting in a movie and be like, just get on with it yeah, already. No, there, there wasn't, there wasn't a, a bad part. Every scene was pretty much integral in, um, you know, character development and what and whatnot. But um, actually, speaking of character development, I thought Michael B. Jordan, his character, I was afraid with seeing, like, the commercials of him basically wearing the Black Panther suit and, you, you know, almost being, like, you know, this fit warrior in the same sense of what uh, Chadwick Bosman is for uh, T'Challa. Right. Um, I was getting afraid that it was going to fall into the same pits of, like, the Marvel villains where it's just like, oh, it's Iron Man but evil or it's... Uh, you know, Ant-Man, but evil, you know, like, he, they, they had a lot of scenes which really did kind of expand his, uh, Killmonger's uh, backstory yeah. and his uh, vendetta and his, his Why whole Why he's doing what he's doing. Exactly, and and that is something that is, is sorely missing in a lot of the yeah. MCU films because you, you don't really know how these villains are like that. I mean, with the exception of, like, you know, you got Yellow Jacket, who's like, I'm a Hydra guy, and, you know, here's a suit, like, yeah. stuff like that, and then they kind of they kind of stumbled when they were doing Zemo, because that was a good thing, but, I mean, he was definitely not, I mean, he was an antagonist, but, like, I mean, you could look at the Civil War movie and, yeah. you know, be like, well, this guy's in the wrong, but that guy's in the wrong, which is kind of the whole point of the, uh, the, 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 the source material with Civil War. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you really think about it, though, out of all the Marvel villains, Killmonger's the only one that had any kind of legitimate gripe with the hero of the movie. Um, I could probably... I mean, I was thinking about, like, Crossbones. Yeah. Like, like he's got... But, I mean, in the same sense, he's like, he's like Captain America, but evil. Like, he's super strong. Like, right. I mean, yeah, we won't get in all, like, super soldier program, et cetera, et cetera, but that, that's basically what you, what you were. You were dealing with a super strong soldier versus a super strong soldier. Yeah. Um, I mean, in, the, in this case, yes, it was the same. However, they did take the time to develop this character. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was just like a scene or two, but still it was enough to be just like, all right, I, like, I get where you're coming from. And yeah. I, un I understand your perspective. I don't really necessarily subscribe to it, but, you know, it was something that was needed. It was some sure. meat for a character that, I mean, uh, would have been absolutely wasted if they didn't have that scene. Because Michael B. Jordan is fantastic. He's definitely a really good actor. He's... Yep. I mean, I know I've brought it up before, Creed. Yep. Like, Creed has, you know, made me a fan of him. He even saved that piece of crap movie, Fantastic Four. Right. Two for two um, on uh, Redeemed Human Torches. Yeah. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Seriously. That's it, baby. Pat a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, apparently, if, uh, you know, your Human Torch and you suck, just join up with the MCU. I feel like it's not like they suck, but they're probably just shackled to a uh, suckiness. Yeah, an unfortunate deal. Yeah, that they got going on. Agreed. Um, but yeah, no, I, I thought it was super badass, super cool. Love the visuals. Yes. Um, all right. Um, if we got any spoiler uh, discussion, we're gonna get into it right now. Um, that's pretty much our. Pretty much our ongoing policy with spoilers is that we, you know, we want to hit it while it's hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> hit it while it's hard. I don't, yeah, I don't That's know. That's what the ladies need to do. Do they? Yeah. Hit right. it while it's hard. So, you know. what do we got? Oh, okay, I saw that motion you there were doing. That's crude and rude. And rude boy. And super par for the podcast. So, I'm going to go this way, actually. <laughs> sure. It doesn't matter, but whatever. Sidebar again in the mobile command station. Uh, spoiler. So we were talking about the uh, the whole Iron Man uh, connections that was going on. Um, definitely the first post credit scene was like super like Tony Stark telling the world I am Iron Man. Yeah. Like so what happened was the whole thing is that Wakanda was a covert nation with super te technological advances that was keeping itself hidden from the world for its own protection. And uh, this first post credit sequence was dealing with T'Challa. 
basically announcing to the world that, uh, hey, Wakanda's going to start spreading some love, start, start spreading some uh, knowledge and um, science and stuff like that. And which, which is what I thought, because the last scene dealt with that, but not really in a global scale, like right. almost like a um, philanthropy and yes. charity, which is what I thought they were going to do, uh, but then they decided to do this. Um, which is super cool, and we'll see what happens with the ripples with the MCU. It's probably just going to be more excuse to get this fancy sci-fi tech Absolutely. into some scenes. I'm. Any thoughts on post credits? I, I mean, I, you know, I, you hit everything pretty much, you know, right on the head. Right. I mean, I think it would have been cool if we saw, you know, like a left area. Yeah, uh, you were saying that. Yeah, slightly that too be... early though, but I think I feel you know, like I think they that would could. be cool. If the, uh, you know what. In the same sense that they they should have shown like the, like a, a newspaper saying it called the Daily Bugle like yeah they can do that they, they sure. can get away with that oh but I, I, yeah I know what you mean I'm a little upset that I mean we were talking about Michael B Jordan he killed it mm-hmm. he also killed Andy Serkis yeah I'm really surprised that was a thing like I thought he was he was awesome. Oh, yeah. I thought he was going to keep going. Like, I wouldn't call him, like, the big bad of the movie or, or really anything. But, like, we're talking about a villain problem. Like, you're, you're allowed to have a couple B-lists, bullshit villains. Like, he, he could have showed up in he needed, Infinity War. He needed him dead. I know, I know that for, for the whole... He, he needed Claw dead in order to get his way into Wakanda. Exactly. But, like, they could he could have kept, kept, kept him alive. Uh, or I'm just saying the story in general. Like, plot-wise, I get why you needed to kill him. But they didn't need to. I feel like they could have kept him like that. I mean, it definitely showed how badass Killmonger was. Yeah, but just not giving a shit, right. doing what he needs to do. Like the fact that he he also shot his girl in the head. True. I yeah. was like, wow. Okay, you're He's you, hardcore. You're just gonna do what you got to do to get your shit done. I kept. I remember the article that we shared on the Rude Boys Twitter account, which is at Rude Boys Four Six Nine about how the director in early portions of the script wanted to put Kareem in it. Uh, and when I was seeing this, I was like, ooh, man, that would have been good. That would have been really that good. That would have been good. Like, they can do that. They're allowed to just kind of, like, mix and match whatever yeah. villains work with whatever. Absolutely. Like, why not? Like, it doesn't need to be, like, a Captain America villain versus Captain America or no. an Iron Man villain versus Iron Man or Thor villain, et cetera, et cetera. Like, they could just... They have a shit ton of characters they could just kind of pull from each like you know why you don't hear about Black Panther villains why is that because Black Panther does his job that's yeah you know that, that is true <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah in this movie definitely showed it like uh, like the the whole vibranium is, is almost like a I don't know it was almost like a cure-all plot point you know what I mean yeah. and, like it's like oh we can cure you know any disease or diarrhea Take some vibranium. Take some vibranium. There you go. <laughs> Take two vibranium in the morning. Exactly. You Male sure? erectile dysfunction? Take some vibranium. Exactly. Like, they, they made it seem like it does everything, which, I, you know, it's a fantasy metal, so sure. Why the hell not? But, yeah, I was surprised they didn't, they didn't talk on any um, Infinity Stone stuff. Because, like, you, I... ha- you had the, the, the heart... Thing? What the fuck was it the, called? The, the herb. The herb. Yeah. The herb that would, you know, basically Heart. give people, you know, like, like they could talk to the dead. And yeah. I mean, that is, I think, the last orb, uh, wow, infinity gem that we are uh, missing right now. Yeah, it's which is, I was gem. kind of surprised. Like, I was yeah. kind of expecting that to be in the, you know, the second uh, one. Like, the second. Uh, after credit scene, yeah, to give something like that. Yeah. I mean, like like how they just kind of like were like yeah, uh, in, in Doctor Strange. Where they yeah, were it's like, the yeah. time gem. Yeah, like yeah, oh exactly. oh thanks. Like uh what? Like no, don't worry about it. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I was expecting something like that, but obviously not like this is the soul gem. Like you know what I mean? Like like this is a magic rock that came from uh, the heavens or something like that. Yeah, no, but then it was very cool to see uh, Bucky in yes. the uh, second. Which, I, I mean, we knew, we, 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 I knew we were going to get. Like, yeah. that was just, like, a foregone conclusion, especially how, you know, he was left to uh, basically get himself all better yeah. at the end of Civil War. I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of uh, new tech his uh, army's going to have. Oh, Jesus, like that, yeah. Because, like, you know, his sister is, uh, his sister's pretty badass yeah, with uh, technology. A very so. badass movie. Like I said, everyone's, everyone had, like, yeah. big-ass scenes. Yeah, and, I, the, and the crowd loved it. The crowd yeah. was eat, eating it up, all, which is always, a, which is always a fun time to be in. When Absolutely, you're in a movie. So it's very receptive to these cool moments. 
I got, I mean, one of the best parts of the movie is probably, I guess his, um, T'Challa's Royal Guard. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know what they were calling them, but anyway, they were badass. Oh, like, yeah. Some kick-ass, hot, bald ladies. Yep, pretty much. Would not want to fuck with them. Probably should have waited for that guy. Oh, he honked at you. Okay, Clown shoes. He's a rude boy, baby. He should, a rude boy. He baby. also should have been looking. Exactly. But everyone should go see it. What do we say, Tom? Out of five. Out of five, I give it a strong five. A strong five out of five. Yep. That's a lot to live up to right now for me. Right now, I said, <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna say a four or five. Five is five out of five is perfect. Yeah. It was very, very, very good. Highly recommended. Rude boy's highest marks, and. um Definitely go see it. I'm super excited. This this was definitely after after a couple misses in my eyes with um the MCU with like you know D Doctor Strange or uh, Guardians really? of the Galaxy Volume Two. Doctor Strange I feel like could have been better than what it was. I, I, I think I might have had higher hopes. That's how you know I feel I mean? with Volume Two. Right with with, with, with Guardians and, and you know um, just stuff like that with between Ragnarok and this like. It's looking pretty good. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I think the future of the MCU is in good hands post-Infinity War, which we will all talk about uh, in a later episode. So stay tuned, everyone. We'll be right back. So that was our Black Panther talk. That was a fun movie. That yeah, was. I'll was say that. Fun. And that was a good talk, too. I enjoyed we that. We were so young back then. We were. We were so innocent, so young. About eight hours ago. So less drunk. But you're yeah. drunk? Damn. Yeah, something like that. Damn. But that was our podcast. <laughs> our very energetic <laughs> podcast. Very uh, energetic <laughs> podcast, yes. Jeez. Um, Can you put a little more enthusiasm into this? No, because I'm sad. You know mm -hmm. what? I'm, I'm sad of, of letting the rude nation go. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch at, on uh, Twitter. On Twitter? At Rude Boys four six nine. Yeah. Oh, all right. Or okay. you know what? They can also get in touch with us. Uh huh. On our personal Twitters. Okay. Which yeah. mine's Tesh Arms T E H underscore S H E R M S. Yeah. And M yours? Mine is Tommy underscore Cash with a K. Okay. How else can they reach us? They could also reach us via email if they would like. Email. So that would be Rude Boys six nine six nine at gmail dot com, right? Yeah. Okay. They can also believe it or not. On Facebook as well. Facebook.com forward slash RudeBoys469? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. And there's one other way that they can, you know, enjoy listening to uh, us, our beautiful voices. How's that? On YouTube. YouTube? YouTube. Well, I don't know the YouTube site, but I do know the bit.ly forward slash RudeBoysRudeTube. So I'm sure that helps. Yeah. Oh, that makes me feel better, Tom. So, you know, until until next time. Right. Stay beautiful, San Francisco. God damn it! Little TMX! <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. We're going to get tagged by dogs. This has been a Wall Street Bangers production. Yeah.